if, <coughs> this morning, what I'm going to be ministering about is the fruit of peace. The fruit of peace. Now, in <coughs> the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 22, the Word of God tells us about the different fruits of the Spirit. And in Galatians, chapter 5, verse 22, the Word of God says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. How many of you know that faith is a fruit of the Spirit? That's right. Meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections, with affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another, and so forth. But what we're talking about this morning, of course, is the fruit of the Spirit. Now, we've talked about love, joy, and this morning I'm going to be teaching about the fruit of peace. Many believers do not realize that peace is a fruit of the Spirit. Peace is not just a feeling that one experiences at salvation. Peace is a fruit. And there's a reason why it's a fruit, as you'll see this morning. This fruit functions, uh, and they are vital to anyone desiring to live in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. You see, because if we're not walking in peace, we're not walking with the Holy Spirit. You see? Now, in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, and you're going to see this morning why the fruit of peace is so imperative that we learn how to cultivate it within our lives. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, beginning in verse 3, how many of you know this morning that we are heading directly right before us into the end times? Amen. That the end times have already begun. Matter of fact, I'm going to bring a magazine tonight that absolutely it will, I will show you uh, that they're putting out by the, 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 the hundreds and hundreds of thousands across America about the end times. It's absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> well... <clears throat> In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, beginning as verse 3, this is where Jesus was talking to his disciples about signs of the end times. And if you notice in verse 3, the Word of God says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, there was the disciples came unto Jesus saying, and there's three questions there, if you'll notice, there's three questions. Tell us when these things shall be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming? and the end of the world. So what we have there is three questions. And then Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of, ru uh, hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, uh, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. And in verse 8, all of these are the beginning of sorrows. Well, what we have here is our Lord Jesus Christ speaking to the disciples about the end times. Now, the first function of the, the fruit of peace is to prevent the hearts of God's people from being troubled. My dear people, there are going to be some things come up on the earth. Y'all listen to me this morning. There are going to be some things that are going to come up on the earth very, very shortly that we cannot pray, fast, or confess away. It's true. We're not going to be able to pray, fast, or confess them away. Why? Well, if you look here in verse 6, the Word of God says, that Jesus is saying, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars... See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. In other words, these things must happen. Jesus said these things must come to pass. And then here, if we look on in verse 7, it says, For nation shall rise up against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. In other words, Jesus in verse 7 was listing these things that must come up on the earth. Now, my dear people, also the book of Luke in chapter 21, if you would turn there with me quickly, expounds upon exactly what Jesus is talking about. Again, in the words of Jesus in Luke 21, 
chapter 10 and 11, the Word of God says, And he said unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Again, talking about signs of the last days. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. And fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. Now, my, my dear people, these things that are coming upon the earth are going to be so fearful that they will have the potential of literally frightening people to death. They will be that fearful. Yes, we're going to be raptured. But how many of you know that these things are already beginning to come to pass? They are already beginning to come to pass, you see, my dear people. Yes, we're going to be raptured. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. The, 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 the door to heaven opens twice, not only once. It opens twice. Revelation 4, 1 and Revelation 19, 11. No, we're not going to go through the tribulation, but we are going to begin the, the, the front of it here as these things begin to come to pass, just like they're coming to pass right now. Now, if you look at verse 26 in, in, in Luke 21, the Word of God says, Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. So you see, my dear people, believers who feel secure, and this is very important this morning, believers who feel secure just because they are in a church are not guaranteed that they will be immune from this fear. Are you aware of that? That's right. Let's go back to the book of Matthew, chapter 24. <clears throat> you see, there's some things that we have to do ourselves. In, in, verse, in, in Matthew 24, verse 8, the Word of God says, All these are the beginning of sorrows. All of these are the beginning of sorrows. In other words, Jesus was saying that these things that we are seeing right now that are beginning to come to pass, you still with me? They are already beginning to come to pass. How many of you know that they're beginning to come to pass? Yes. All right. All you got to do is turn on the 6 o'clock news, isn't it? All right. They are already beginning to come to pass. And he's saying that they are the beginning of sorrows. The beginning of sorrows. Well, my dear people, if you look at the Greek, back to the original Greek text, the word sorrows is the Greek word od odin. O-D-I-N. And it's pronounced odin. Odin. And the word sorrows in the Greek means travail, pain, as in childbirth. Travail and pain as in childbirth. In other words, the earth is about to give birth to the Great Tribulation. The earth is about to give birth to the Great Tribulation. When Jesus saying in Matthew 6, I mean, Matthew 24, verse 6, he says, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for these things must come to pass, but the end is not. In other words, these things that Jesus is speaking of are the beginning of the travail of the earth. They are the beginning. They are the beginning of the travail of the earth. Now, to give an example, is just as a woman who is in labor before a child is born. In other words, the earth must also experience this pain. And what you're seeing going on is the travail. The earth is in travail. The earth is in travail. This is why you're seeing earthquakes and famines and pestilences and, and floods. And the, I, I can't even name them as so many anymore going on. Wars and rumors of wars. You see, pain of earthquakes, famines, pestilence, and fearful sights. As the Word of God says. My dear people, once travail starts in the earth, just as in a woman giving birth, how many of you know that when a woman begins to give birth, you're not going to stop it? You're not going to be able to pray it, confess it, or fast it away, are you? No. You're not going to be able to stop it. And my dear people, the earth is in the travail. What is the birth of the great tribulation hour? We've been blessed that we've had a lot of teaching about the end times in this church. But my dear people, as a woman in travail knows that her child is about to be birthed, when the pains become uh, more, in other words, she knows that when they become more intense and closer and closer together. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. My dear people, the same is true of the travail of the earth. Think about it. Think about it. 
just as the signs in Luke 21 and Matthew 24 occur more frequently and of greater intensity. And that's what the Lord is showing us here. My dear people, we can be assured that the earth is about to be delivered. You can put it in the bank. You can be assured that the earth is about to be delivered. If you don't think so, turn on the 6 o'clock news or pick up the daily newspaper when you get home today. The birth pains spoken of by Jesus are intensifying. How many of you know they're intensifying? They are intensifying. And they are to a greater degree than ever before in history. There have been more earthquakes uh, uh, since 1960 than 1960 all the way back to history began. And now, my dear people, they are intensifying. And if you, were, if you think back a little bit in your own lives, uh, we, where we used to see this type of a signs yearly or monthly, now it's almost daily. It is almost daily throughout all of the world. They got a flood now in Italy. Last week it was a, 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 a something else. Last week before that, it was something else. The week before that, it was something else. And used to, you see, well, it was a monthly or yearly. But now they're coming daily. It's intensifying. It's intensifying. Why? Because the earth is about to birth the great tribulation. My dear people, Jesus Christ is coming and He's coming quick. And He's coming soon. What do you hear the message tonight? Glory be to God. Oh. What do you hear the message tonight? Do you want to miss it? <laughs> you don't want to miss it. <laughs> Hallelujah. My dear people, <clears throat> see what you must remember is when God begins to move, when God begins to move, so does the devil. <laughs> when a God begins to move, so does the devil. And my dear people, <clears throat> I don't think I have to tell anybody in this room, there is an increase in violence, death, and destruction the world over. There are things happening, for instance, in this country, and again, I've been in this country going on seven years, not quite seven yet, uh, but I can think back seven years ago and never even heard of it. Never even heard of it. One of the things I've always loved about this country is I could go to bed at night and not even worry about locking my door. Because you can't do that in the States. But you can't do that here now. <laughs> huh? <sighs> True? All right. You see, even, even if you think about it, even non-believers are beginning to ask, well, what's going on? Hey, they're getting, they're getting worried. They're getting concerned. So you see, our Lord Jesus Christ told us that when these things begin to come to pass, when they begin to uh, start happening in the earth, uh, if you notice here in verse 6, He's saying, See that ye are not troubled. And I want you to underline that. See that ye are not troubled. You know what he's saying there? Stay in peace. Stay in peace. And you're going to see this morning why it, it, we must, we must, we must develop and cultivate the, the fruit of peace. It's the fruit of the Spirit. Why? Because there's much trouble coming up on the earth, my dear people. Our Lord Jesus Christ is saying, See that ye be not troubled. In other words, stay in peace. If we look at John's Gospel, chapter 14... Thank you, Jesus. John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 27. Our Lord Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Then the Lord says, Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. My dear people, the presence of peace is the fruit of the Spirit that will keep trouble out of our hearts. You still with me? My dear people, regardless of the extent that the devil comes at us, we will not be troubled if we possess the peace of God. If we possess that peace of God. But you see, we must develop peace in our lives now. And you must do it now. And then begin to walk in it. As you've never walked into it, in it before. Because I tell you, my dear people, times are going to be getting tough. They're going to be getting tough. It, 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 it uh, 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 breaks my heart that I can't, get the, can't seem to get the word out. I can't seem to get... 
people to wake up in the churches and the communities around here. I don't know what they do. They run from this message. They run from this anointing, my dear people. But we are in the end times. We're in the very last of the last times. There's no time left. There's virtually nothing left. <clears throat> my dear people, Again, we must develop that peace in our lives and now and learn to walk in it, not only for ourselves, but for our families and for our neighbors and everyone else. Because I'm telling you, as the birth pains continue to intensify around us, uh, peace will be our only way of preservation. It will be our only way of preservation. If you turn with me, please, to the book of Philippians. The book of Philippians, chapter 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> Philippians chapter 4. I want you to see this. Amen. <coughs> Philippians chapter 4. You're going to have an eye opener this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what the Holy Spirit wants to do. He wants to inspire you and give you a revelation. In, in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, the Word of God says, Be careful for nothing. In other words, don't worry. Don't fret. Be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. But notice verse 7 there. He says, the Word of God says, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, first of all, I want to point out to you in verse 7, I want to point this out to you, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding. How many of you want to continually walk in that peace that passeth all understanding? Amen. Amen. Okay. Boy, so what is he saying? He says, It shall keep your hearts and what? Minds. Hearts, your spirit, and your mind. Okay. Through Christ Jesus. But I want to point something out to you this morning. That word keep. Circle it in your Bible. Circle it in your Bible. That word keep in verse 7. Do you know what that word keep means in the Greek? It's phororo. I can't pronounce it hardly. It's P-H-R-O-U-R-E-O. -E it's a Greek word for keep. And do you know what it means? That word keep is a military term. It is a military term. And it means to keep up a military guard. To keep up a military guard. It's saying, and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep. In other words, keep up a military guard for your heart and your mind. Keep up a heart, I mean a, a military mind for your heart and your mind. Why? So that you can walk in the peace of God. You see there? You see there? Okay. Now, so in other words, uh, that word keep is a military term. It is a military term that, that means to keep up a military guard that we may walk in this peace. Uh, in other words, have a military guard guarding our heart and our mind against who? The enemy. Because that's who comes to steal the peace, isn't it? He comes to steal the peace. But the Word of God is saying, if you remember, in, in Philippians 4, 7 and John 14, 27, both, get your guard up. Get your guard up and see to it that you be not troubled. Get your guard up and see to it that you be not troubled and stay in peace. Do you know why? Because, my dear people, staying in peace is your responsibility. You realize that? Staying in peace is your responsibility. That's the reason why you have to keep up the military guard. You have to keep up the military guard. You know, everybody thinks, well, God's going to do this and God has done that. Going to do that. My dear people, God's already done it. How many of you know that God's in rest? Amen. Isn't He in rest? You're trying to call Him out of retirement. You keep asking for things. Do you understand? If God's in rest... And you say, oh God, I need this, oh God, I do that, I oh, need this and all that. What you're trying to do is call him in out of retirement. He's already done it. He's already done it. Where was it done? It was done at the cross. It was done at the cross. That's the reason why he says, uh, you take my word, which is a sword of the Spirit, put it in your hand, and you do it. He's retired. <laughs> you thought about it that way, have you? Exactly right. You see, my dear people? Okay. So get your guard up so that you will not be troubled. In other words, stay in peace because that peace is our responsibility. You see? Now, turn with me please to uh, the book of Luke, chapter 10. And we're going to read the story about Martha and Mary in Luke 10. Thank you, Jesus. Luke. 
What did I say? Luke chapter 10? Okay. Luke chapter 10. Begin at verse 38. Now this is where Jesus was at Mary and Martha's house. Beginning of verse 38. Now it came to pass, as they went, that he, speaking of Jesus here, entered into a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha received him into her house, meaning Jesus. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. So you see, what we have there, if you notice, is Jesus was at Mary and Martha's house. Now Martha was cumbered about with much serving. though She was busy. Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus. She was sitting at the feet of Jesus. And see, the first thing that happens to believers when they lack peace and are troubled in their hearts is that they neglect to sit at the feet of Jesus. They neglect to sit at the feet of Jesus and hear His Word. You see? Martha was moving all around Jesus. He was, uh, she was moving all around Jesus and she was serving Him. You see, we get too busy sometimes serving Jesus. He wants us to serve Him. Don't get me wrong. Her troubled heart kept her from experiencing the peace that was available through Jesus. Now, she was too busy doing other things. You understand? We're not too busy to serve Jesus, but I mean, she was too busy doing things. But the peace and presence of God can fill a room. In other words, that you can hear a pin drop, can't you? When we're sitting at His feet. That's what we experienced this morning. The peace and presence of God came in and you could hear a pin drop. And my dear people... That's how it must be in the hearts and minds of believers today if we are to hear the voice of God. We've got to stay in that peace. Too often, Christians sit at the feet of Jesus to hear His Word. Now, I want you to listen to this now. But lack self-discipline to persevere until they find the peace of mind and heart. You see? They will sit at the feet of Jesus to hear His Word, but lack self-discipline to persevere until they find the peace of mind and heart in order to hear His voice. That's the reason why Jesus said they are troubled about many things. Speaking about Martha's, but when He started talking about Mary, He said, she hath chosen the good part. Because she, she was sitting at His feet. She was in peace. But Martha was troubled. She was moving about. She wasn't in peace, you see. Amen? Now, turn with me, please, to the Colossians. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Colossians. Thank you, Jesus. Chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. Everybody got it? Everybody got it? Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. And let the peace of God rule in your heart. You see that first sentence there? How many of you got a King James this morning? Okay. The Word of God says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. I'm going to say it again. And let the peace of God rule in your heart. Because this is really going to open your eyes this morning, you see, my dear people. Because if you'll notice that we are to let. You see that word there? Let. Put a little circle around it. Let peace rule in our hearts. In other words, peace is an act of our will. You see that? Peace is an act of our will through patience and practice. And then that word rule in the Greek, in that verse 15 there, says, uh, uh, is barbeo, it's B-R-A-B-E-U-O, and it means to act as an umpire. To act as an umpire. So in other words, uh, the peace of God 
will act as an umpire in our lives if we let it. The peace of God will act as an umpire in our lives if we let it. In other words, as we learn to listen to our heart, as we become sensitive to the leading of God's peace, we will be able to perceive the leading of the Holy Spirit. Did everybody get that? Because peace is an act of our will through patience and practice. The peace of God will act as an umpire in our lives if we let it. So as we learn to listen to our heart, as we become sensitive to the leading of God's peace, we will be able to perceive the leading of the Holy Spirit. In other words, learn to follow the peace. How many of you ever heard that before? Learn to follow the peace. In other words, the peace of God will act as an umpire and guide us when it comes to making a decision in our lives. When you learn to follow the peace. I've talked to many pastors in many churches and, and I say, well, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about that? Or, well, I don't know about this. Or I don't know about that. And you know what they say? Well, just follow the peace. Just follow the peace. You see? Follow the peace. Why? Because you see, the peace of God will act as an umpire when we let it rule our hearts. You see? The peace. And God will guide us when making a decision. If what? We let it. If we let it. Let. If we let it. Why? Because we have a free will. We have a free will. If we let it, you see. Hallelujah. Now, also, the fruit of peace enables us to become peacemakers. Peacemakers. If you turn with me quickly to Matthew chapter 5. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Thank you, Jesus. This is where Jesus, of course, is speaking at the Sermon on the Mount. In chapter 5, verse 9, Jesus is saying, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Now, the reason peacemakers are blessed is because they are the children of God. Did you know that? That's right. The reason they are are blessed is because they are the children of God. You see, my dear people, as children of God, being peacemakers is not an option. Did you hear me? As children of God, being a peacemaker is not an option. We are supposed to be peacemakers. That's part of our Christian walk. You see? So we must cultivate peace so that we may minister... Peace to others. That's the reason why the Lord wants us to cultivate peace. Why? So that we may minister peace to others. This is the reason why we have cell group training going right now. Huh? Cell group training going right now. Why? So that you can learn to minister to one another. One of them is peace. Be a peacemaker. Someone comes in, they're stirred up, they got problems, become a peacemaker. A peacemaker. You see? That's what the Lord wants us to do. So you see, we, as we minister peace to others and to each other, and are the peacemakers that God wants us to be, people will come to us to find peace. Because I'm going to tell you, my dear people, uh, the world out there has got no peace in it. The world out there has got no peace. And I'll tell you, one, one of the things that, the, that the, uh, I've always noticed about my wife is the fact that I don't care what's wrong with somebody. She says, well, can I pray for you? Can I pray for you? Can I pray for you? Right? I can be in the middle of the street. I can be at the green grocery. She said, let me lay hands on you and pray for you. Let me lay hands on you and pray for you. Years ago, I used to be embarrassed. Huh? But she's always...